Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons, and we're going to talk about Kelsey Dion, and we're going to talk about the OSR. We're going to talk about the chickens coming home to roost for the OSR. We're going to talk about Leyline Press, and we're going to talk about a situation where the OSR is being asked to answer for their, you know, for their uh, cultural, um, more than missteps, uh, you know, cultural uh, catastrophes, right, that they've created over the last few years, right? And the OSR is there's a reckoning coming for the OSR, and it and it just happened, right? So let me uh, let me lay it down. Like this just broke. This is like 24 hours old, and I'm on it. Let's let's talk about it, right? But because I'm talking about it fresh and brand new, if I you know if if any of what I say is not correct, please correct me, and then I'll correct it in the description or I'll correct it in a future video. But these are the facts as I understand them. So Leyline Press is bringing a a new tabletop role playing game product to the market. And they, they actually, from their Twitter, right, apologized because they had a single editor who worked on their product. They, they had a single uh, contributor who worked on one of their tabletop role-playing game products who, who edited Lamentations of the Flame, Flame Princess. Lamentations of the Flame Princess, don't get it twisted, that is one of the OSR's greatest, greatest villains, Right? Uh, the Lamentation of Flame Prince has been sitting over there for years, and so what? What are the, what are the you know the cultural crimes of the OSR? Well, the biggest one is that it's a, in my humble opinion, it's that it, it's that they are a haven for prejudice, right? The OSR is a haven for prejudice, right? And this is why I stand against them, right? And so basically, it started with, hey, we're old school, man. It's just. Humans, dwarves, elves. So you keep your dragonborn out, and you keep this race out, and you keep this race out. And if you talk to OSRs, right, like the, the down in the weed ones, they're like they'll t- they they love to talk to you about what races can't be included in a tabletop role playing game. They love it; it's their favorite topic, right? And then a lot of people were like, uh, "Are you guys like super into race exclusion in a fantasy game? Because you're like super into race exclusion in IRL." And that and once that question started getting ants asked and answered. Yeah, like people were like, "Oh, this is uh, this feels yucky, right?" The OSR got a lot of prejudice in it, a lot of prejudice, and has become a haven for people who are really into prejudice. Now, now, and so they got things to answer for. And Leyline Press was like, "We need to apologize that we brought anybody who ever worked on Lamentation of the Flame Princess anywhere near our product. We are apologizing to you and saying we are so sorry we brought anyone who worked on this OSR game into even anywhere near your product." We have to apologize for it, right? And so there's this reputational damage for the OSR, right? And and the chickens are coming home to roost, right? They, in my humble opinion, the OSR at the macro level, there are certainly there are certainly individuals who, who go against the tide of the OSR. Ben from Questing Beasts, phenomenal dude, most kind, tolerant, one of the most kind, tolerant dudes in the world. You know, he he is into the OSR, but he stands against this macro trend in the in my humble opinion in the OSR and then Kelsey Dion right so Kelsey Dion has emerged as the king of the OSR and so so now that we see that you that the OSR has built such a horrific like prejudiced landscape in their products that even like that companies will apologize the moment they even they even find out that anyone that anyone they that working on their product was even remotely connected to any of these OSR projects that were havens or for prejudice, that they will immediately apologize, right? So now the OSR is in trouble. Do they have a savior, right? Do they have somebody who can save them from this fate, right? And the answer is maybe. <laughs> so so without a doubt, the Kelsey Dion has emerged as this incredible, incredibly capable. Um, OSR King, right? And with Shadow Dark RPG, she literally bested every single OSR creator in the history of OSR. And she's like, hey, look at this incredibly kind, tolerant, progressive product where you'll find nothing offensive, right? And it's fully OSR. That's new. That's fresh. That's shocking, right? And, oh, and it doesn't do scrub numbers. It actually made a million on Kickstarter. In fact, it's the number one OSR product by sales ever. So I'm not only fixing the OSR, I'm putting up real numbers. And I can't be ignored because I've outperformed every single one of your products. Like, Lamentation of Frame Princess never did a million on any product, right? Like, you know, on, on Kickstarter, right? 
So she's outperformed the prejudice OSR contributors, and she's saying, let's fix OSR. Here's the problem. Here's the problem, right? I had a lot of hope for Kelsey Dion, but my hope is waning, and here's why. She is capable of being the OSR king that kicks out the prejudice from the OSR, right? That stands against them and says, let's clean up the OSR. There's no room for prejudice here, right? But she don't want to do that. It does not look like she wants to do that. She is, she's working hard on Shadow Dark RPG, and she's working to just deliver it for everybody, and she has done nothing to, to claim her... She has the crown, right? But she's not making any regal commandments, right? She's not commanding people to bow the knee and help her to rid the OSR of the uh, of all who make it a, pre- a haven of prejudice, right? And so the problem we have now, we realize, and this is what I think is happening. I hope I'm wrong, right? It looks to me like uh, Kelsey Dion has the king crown and is capable of fixing the OSR and 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 forging a new reputation for it, which is good, so good that you could put an OSR contributor onto your product and not have to apologize a week later, right? That, that people could be proud to have OSR contributors at the macro level on their product, right? She has that ability, but she's not willing. She's not willing. She just wants to be a Shadow Dark creator. She wants to have a nice million dollar Kickstarter. She wants to have, I created a game. She doesn't want to be a political leader, right? She doesn't want to be a political leader for the OSR. She doesn't want to clean, she doesn't want to clean it up. She doesn't want to take the work of that, the slings and arrows that she will get the second she starts the work of cleaning up the OSR. So she's capable, fully capable, but not fully willing. That's what it looks like to me, right? Kelsey, I'm asking you, hey, are you interested? Can you, fi- can you, can you fix the OSR, right? Are you willing? I know you're capable of it. We all know you're capable of it. You just proved your capability by, by putting every single OSR creator who has ever created a game in the dirt by the numbers, right? We know you're capable. The question is, are you willing, right? I would really love to hear... Uh, you know, if you're willing. So, uh, excuse me. (coughs) Excuse me. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion and I get to hear Kelsey Dion's response. Only 1% chance of that, but hey, we can all hope. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Please consider liking, subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.